Good morning for me, Greg, on another sunny day, another time to reflect, and another time to uh, take stock of what's happening around us and within us. I thought I'd start today by uh, reading Psalm 24. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean heart, hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in idols or swear by any false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. And as we've been talking about how at this time when we've been brought to a standstill, where we've got time to stop, think, pray, read the word, if we've got children to realize how precious they are, even though they might wind you up the wrong way. Don't forget that uh, children are 50-50 mum and dad. And so it's like looking in the mirror. So all the things that you don't like about yourself, you can see in them. But when we draw near to God, it's like ascending the mountain of the Lord. And it says, who may stand in his holy place or ascend that mountain? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who do not trust in idols or swear by any false gods. And it's all about integrity. It's all about having a short account, having our hearts cleansed as we repent and forgive. You know, I've often said it's a, the, the things that I've learned in my life is to forgive quickly and, and say I'm sorry quickly. Because often when I don't, it festers inside me and destroys me from the inside out because the other person might have even forgotten what it's all about or moved on. But also it says, does not trust in an idol. And an idol is not necessarily something carved of stone or metal or something like that. But it might be that we have idolatry of money or a car or a house or status we could have idolatry for our children there are many things we can have idolatry of and that's where we put them above god i remember the scripture where it says unless you love me more than mother father brother sister and all all the rest of it you have no part in me and i found that really difficult because you can't stop loving your family but then as I progressed and prayed and I said, okay, Lord, I give them to you because you are number one in my life, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. The Lord is the King of glory. And actually when, when I did that, it was uh, a, an interesting thing because I started to love them in a different way, in a way that I hadn't experienced before because I saw them as God saw them. And actually I loved them more, but in a different way. And th that was a, a precious time uh, in my life. So these are times of learning. These are times of change. These are times, actually precious times which have never happened before. And many of us have never stopped. Many of us have kept busy to stop thinking things. 
many of us uh, are overactive. Yesterday, I showed you this picture. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And the picture of the grapes there. And up here is a crystal. It's a, supposedly a diamond. And the thing they have in common is that to make wine, you have to crush them, filter them, and allow them to develop and mature. With a diamond, originally, it would have been a lump of coal. And coal as we know, as diamonds, is caused through pressure. Pressure that over many centuries crushes, refines, and creates something incredibly beautiful. And over time, as we have our challenges, have our difficulties, have our uh, times that we don't want to think about, as we are crushed sometimes, challenged, hurt, it builds character, strength. And as we saw from the diamond, purity clear, transparent, and you see the different facets reflect the light. And we are called to be less of us and more like him. So when people see us, they don't see us. They see Jesus reflected out of us from our hearts as loving, kind, precious people who want to bless others. So although at the time it's difficult, although at the time it's horrendous, if we respond in the way that God wants us to respond, we can be really precious and valuable. And, you know, if I had a diamond that big and I've got one, a crystal like this upstairs, which is even bigger, I'd be very rich because it's valuable, because it's pure, and basically reflects so much beautiful light. And that's what we're called to be. We continue in our prayers and uh, we praise the Lord for John's continuous uh, recovery. We pray for his protection. For, and also we pray for his wife Val, for Barbara and the family. We also pray for the key workers. We pray earnestly for Boris Johnson today, for him to be healed and to be restored to his uh, position uh, of day-to-day -day management as prime minister. We pray for Jay and Tom, who have volunteered to go to London, leave behind their young families and serve at the NHS Nightingale Hospital. And I haven't forgot the arty farty types. You know who we are. Dave and Morgan, Ingrid with their tutting, I mean, um, Ingrid with their tatting. <laughs> Janet, who's knitting baby clothes. Penny, who is sewing and making scrubs for the NHS. We pray a blessing on all of those. And we pray a blessing on those who are alone, those who are separated from their families, those who are lonely, those who are bored, those who are struggling. And we pray for ourselves that we will take the difficulties and challenges and opportunities we've got so that the Lord can transform us into something more beautiful 
that reflects his light. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we praise you that you have a plan, that the earth is yours and everything in it. And we praise you, Lord, that you love us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, that we may be forgiven and that we may inherit a gift of eternal life. We pray for the Queen and the royal family. We thank you for Her Majesty's talk and the letter that she uh, released yesterday for International Health Day. Thank you for her vigilance. Thank you for her stability. Thank you for her leading us as the longest serving uh, head of state in the world. We pray for Boris Johnson, Lord, in intensive care. We praise you and thank you for the NHS staff who are looking after all people in, in intensive care around the country. But we pray for his healing. We pray for his recovery. We pray, Lord, for the ongoing uh, government to stand firm and strong following the plans that have been given to them. We also pray, mighty God, King of Kings, that you forgive our land, forgive our people and heal our land. We pray also, Lord, for the nations of the world who are also suffering through this coronavirus. And we just heard the other day that even the Falkland Islands has one uh, coronavirus victim from somebody in the military. And with only three and a half thousand people on that island, it's really difficult and a challenge. We pray for Italy, Spain, France, Germany. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the countries in the Middle East. We pray for Israel, pray for Jerusalem, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you deliver us from this pestilence, this plague of uh, virus, Lord. But that people will hear what you are saying to them about how we should repent and turn from our wicked ways, seek your face so that you can forgive our sins and heal our land. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus surround you. May the love of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. May the joy of the Lord Jesus bubble from within and overflow as a blessing to others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, all whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Don't forget that uh, Monday, Thursday, tomorrow, we will be uh, having communion together and we will be reflecting on the Passover meal and how Jesus used the symbolism of the Passover meal to instigate the Holy Communion. Until then, God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.